Hello everyone and welcome back. I have been playing around with Apophia's Veil quite a bit lately, as I want to see just how good it can get with other subclass traits in game, as honestly, there's still so much the exotic can do, like this shown example. If you're a fan of pre nerf Starfire Protocol, then the following build can replicate its fast recharge rate to a good degree. With this, you can proc Scorch recognitions here at a consistent rate, have a very applicable solo to team DPS build for new light players, and overall, have a decent team support build that will be useful once GMs do come back around. If you want to know more as to how to go about this, then stay tuned for more. So, to start, you're going to want to have Touch of Flame so that fusion grenades can explode twice. Then you want Heat Rises, where you can use your weapons and abilities while gliding in the air. While Airborne and having Heat Rises active, getting a kill will grant you melee energy. For Fragments, Ember of Eruption, where your solar ignitions have increased area effect. Ember of Searing, where defeating Scorched targets grant melee energy and creates Fire Sprite. Ember of Sharp, where your solar ignition spreads Scorch to affected targets. And Ember of Ashes, where you apply more Scorch stacks to targets. As the build will focus on the strength of our grenades and melee stats, it's going to be within our focus to make sure each and every ignition triggered is a devastating effect as possible. Ember of Searing effect will always be active with thanks to our abilities and exotic at our helm. Combining this with Incineration Snap and Fusion Grenade for their short duration will allow the build to refund these two effects within a short time frame compared to anything else available. The idea here is that one ability will feed the other, while the other will do the same and vice versa. In true solar fashion, this has proved to be quite effective as a way to trigger ignitions back to back while also doing some unholy level of damage. Honestly, as long as your build stats are high, then the rest of the build will fall in place once you actively play and create Scorch Marks. For the modern stats, we'll be using both melee and discipline to maximise our damage output, while our heavy is in use. We do have our recovery at tier 10 as well for a 48 second rift cooldown, but this is more for allowing us to activate key mods such as Absolution and Distribution for faster ability regen, and then Powerful Attraction and Reaper for an easy way to create all the power faster. You don't need to have this stat up so high, so if you want to, you can invest more into your melee or even better your resilience stat instead. The discipline, we have ours at tier 10 with a 38 second grenade cooldown when using fusion grenades. At this base level, we will be supporting the build further with fire sprite, grenade kickstart, absolution and distribution mods, so no matter where we are, we can always have this grenade available at a moment's notice. As Grenade Kickstart will play a massive role in how fast we can get our ability energy back, having the Elemental Charge mod will be important for getting a 31% grenade return upon activation. We also have the Impact Induction and Momentum Transfer mod, which will both be supporting our two key abilities back and forth, so you should be set with using grenades as many times as you like. And our Strength stat is at Tier 8, with a 54 second cooldown. The only reason this is not higher, or even maxed out, is because of the Ember of Searing, Heat Rises and Momentum Transfer mod effect which will grant you melee energy back, so there is no point at all of investing more into this stat when that can be pushed elsewhere. This next section covers the additional mods and armor charges. We have Charged Up which will expand how many charges we can carry once we collect an aura power. After that, having Harmonic Siphon will further help with creating auto power at a faster rate for us. And then lastly, having access to assets, hands-on, and solo scavenger mods will be very important when activating the build to its max fullest. So for the weapons, we will be using the Zalo's Bane with Incandescent and Assemble, which is a nice weapon to overall use with the build since we can activate its origin trait more often via our user well in a team. It has good damage, good range, decent reload, fits well with fragments used, and feels nice to use even when being applied in endgame content. However, I am aware that the following is a raid exclusive weapon that not everyone's able to get, which is why the Apochal Integration Hand Cannon from Lightform is another good alternative to get, which is in the same frame type as Zala's Bane, but does offer a bit more ease of use and extra damage via its static perks and stats. All you gotta make note of here is you just need a weapon with incandescent on it, and you should be good from there. For Heavy, we have the Dragon's Breath Exotic, which has now been newly reworked from D1. The following now focuses on applying a Napalm effect, which can continuously build up Scorching Initions the longer its effects are available. 
It can also reload at times by fuel, once ignitions from outside sources are triggered, which makes it a perfect DPS weapon to operate with. This fits the build style we are going for, as I am using a fusion rifle that has auto loading on it as one of its main perks, and then combining this with our Well of Radiance makes a decent DPS setup for those who just want something nice and instant. So our last build around Pothia's Realm focused on Strand and his near instant regenerative abilities, so now I want to push that focus onto the Scylla side of things. Many of you here may have experience with using Starfire Protocol before his nerf, and if you want to feel that level of DPS again, then the following should scratch that itch. Now it's not a one-to-one -one build as Starfire is his own thing, plus it can activate his ability a lot faster than what Apotheus can do with thanks to his passive means. However, although this may be a weakness for the exotic, we can turn this into a strength and easily make it better than what Starfire offers at the moment. This simple setup allows us to passively regenerate abilities via fragments that focus on scorching and igniting as much as possible. Using the weapon with incandescent on it, and also using Dragon's Breath, we can, under specific circumstances, grant ourselves a huge ability buff and DPS boost just from procking our effects. Ember of Searing would regenerate melee abilities from enemies burnt, while also creating fire spite for us to collect. This would feed back into Grenade Kickstart, Momentum Transfer, Impact Induction, and Elemental Charge for self-preservation effects. This will ultimately link back into Ash's assets and hands-on for super energy regen and thus fast super usage by a mile. Overall, the following setup will not only give you the ability to regenerate abilities within a safe and effective manner, but will also make full use of your super without the need of waiting around too much. It's Starfire Protocol, but a more tamed version of it, which does hold a lot of weight and DPS for players to make full use of. Using this against bosses to mini bosses does show a lot of promise in terms of bursting a boss health down as fast as possible, and with how easy it is to get your super up and running via solo, you'll never be too far off from using your super again. I can see this being useful in Grandmasters and Master Content as well, where a lot of firepower is needed in quick burst. However, you may need to change a few things up, such as MIDI for a more ranged version, change your primary weapon, adding Ember of Torches and Imperium for longer lasting radiant effect, etc. Things that improve the build further, without taking too much of the core design away from it. My final input of the build is that, while Pothia's Veil buff has been fairly accepted by the community, it's not exotic to where you want to bring for anything too short, or quickly melted by the setup. This exotic melts in the right setup like shown, and if you can replicate the following with up subclasses, then you'll be good in the long run. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below. While at the same time, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below. If you want more stuff like this, then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.